guys and welcome to my new YouTube channel, The Roxy Horror Show. So for this week's episode, we're going to go on about the haunting in Galway. Now, this happened in Car Park in Westside, of all places. But anyway, so in Car Park lived a family, the Fahis. There was Jack and Esther with their son, Mike, fiance, Anne, and their daughter, Martha, with her new baby daughter, Sarah Louise. Now, this happened back in 1996, so it happened quite a long time ago. Now, it all started a few months after the baby was born. There was construction works going on around the house, outside the house, and there was a few renovations going on next door. So, as it happens, the renovations next door was actually right against Sarah Louise's room. So, they had to move the crib out of the way so Sarah Louise can get a bit of sleep when she's down for her nap. That was fine. But a few days after that, they started noticing this real rotten, putrid, disgusting smell around the house. And Jack and Mike couldn't figure out for the life of them where it was coming from. So they rang the council who would look after the house as it was a council house. And they said they'd be out. So they came out the next day, surprisingly. Back now, they wouldn't come out straight away. But anyway, that's another story. So they came out anyway, and they walked around the house and they were asking, where are you getting this smell? They couldn't smell anything at all. Now, Jack and Mike were like, how can you not smell it? It's like something died. How are you not smelling this? And they were like, lads, we cannot smell anything. So they left. Now, after they left, Mike and Jack could not understand. Esther started pulling everything out of the presses, started cleaning, bleaching the house top to bottom, trying to find where the smell was coming from. And they couldn't find it. Now, a few days passed and all of a sudden it just disappeared. They didn't understand where, like, how can something go so rotten to something gone? They couldn't understand it at all. But they started feeling like cold spells around the house. They'd walk down the house and down the hallway in the house and they'd feel like this ice kind of blast hit them. They were that cold. And they're just like, what is going on? So they put the heating on. Still wasn't working. Anyway, that night, Mike and Anne was asleep and they were woken up. Well, the whole house was asleep, but Mike and, in Aunt, Mike and Anne's room, they could hear screaming like the baby was roaring and they couldn't understand why Martha wasn't tending to Sarah Louise. So Anne kind of pushed Mike and was like, go on, you go check on that child to make sure everything's okay. And he was like, yeah, fine. So he went down the hallway and he went into the child's room and he noticed Sarah Louise was asleep. She wasn't even moving. She was fast asleep. Not a bother to her. So he went into the room and he said it to Anne. Look, Sarah's asleep. And she goes, can you not hear that crying, Mike? And he was like, I can, but Sarah's asleep. And as he kind of went to go back into bed, he felt like this, I don't know, something anyway, pushing against his chest, almost choking him. He couldn't catch his breath and... He was just like really getting really, really panicky and struggling for air and then it got off him. And he kind of sat down on the bed and they grabbed the rosary beads, himself and Anne, and started praying. Now, as they were praying, the crying was getting louder and louder and louder. And as the baby was getting louder, they started roaring, getting louder and louder and louder. And the minute they stopped praying, the baby stopped. There was no more crying. Not great, get a bit of sleep. All of a sudden, starts again. So the baby starts crying again and the first thing they do is they grab them rosary beads and start praying again. Now obviously with them getting louder and louder they walk up the house. Jack came in and he was like lads what are you at? And they're like can you not hear that crying that? Can you not hear it? Sarah Louise is not asle is asleep sorry and there's a baby crying. There's something going on. And he goes, well, there is something going on. The two of you are shouting and you're waking up the house. Will you stop, be quiet and go to sleep? So that was that. Nobody believed Mike and Anne. Now, stranger things were happening throughout the house. A anything to do with the bottles, even. They went to make Sarah Louise a bottle and all the bottles disappeared. They had to go out to the, ha go out to the shop and buy new bottles. They couldn't understand what is going on. They thought Mike was hiding things even at this stage. But no. Mike wasn't hiding anything at all. So Sarah Louise had to go for a doctor's appointment. So Martha obviously brought her. She 
had her check up, everything was fine with the baby, the baby was fine and healthy, great size, everything. And when they went back to the house, Martha was like, right, I'm going to put the child down for a nap. So she went upstairs, she looked, she opened the bedroom door and she screamed for her dad to come up. Now Jack came up and in front of them, all the baby's teddies was in a circle on the ground. And her little jewellery box was open with, you know, the ones with the little ballerina? Yeah, that goes around the circle with a little nursery rhyme. Well, that was open. I was playing the little nursery rhyme. And Jack was like, what is going on? Who would have done this? And Martha straight away, oh, sure, wouldn't you know? So straight away, I thought it was Mike again. And Mike was like, right, I'll prove it to you. We have a tape recorder. We're going to put it in the room. So they put it, they set up the tape recorder up in baby Sarah Louise's room. And Mike realised that he left all the tapes downstairs. So he went downstairs to grab the tape. Jack followed him. And all of a sudden they hear this mighty crash and bang. So they ran back up to the stairs and wouldn't you know, the tape recorder was smashed on the ground. Now, it wasn't just smashed. It was like it was picked up and forced down to the ground. And somebody literally danced on it. It was in bits. Now, they were trying to figure out what happened. Who, who could have done it? And all of a sudden they hear Esther, Martha and Anne screaming downstairs. So they ran down to them and the curtains were violently opening and closing, opening and closing. And they were like, what is going on? And obviously they ran out of the house and they ran into the neighbours, banged on the door. Thank God the neighbours were in and they let them in. They are like, Jesus, what's wrong with you? And they tried explaining to them what has been happening in the house. Well, Mike did, because Mike had more of an insight. And they were like, yeah, okay, would you not think of getting a priest to bless the house? if you're that worried about it. So they did, they contacted the local priest and the priest came in. Now he was very skeptical now in fairness. He didn't, he was like, ah, here, what's going on that's So he blessed the living room. But as he was blessing it, he could hear like whimpering and he looked at the baby and Sarah Louise, she was quiet. She was happy, bonny little baby in Martha's arms. And he went, where is the spirit mainly? Where are you hearing all the noises? Mike says upstairs in the room, in Sarah Louise's room. So they went upstairs anyway and the priest, he kind of, it's like he sensed something. He just did not want to be in that room. So we done a quick old prayer and he ran out the door. And Mike was like, is that it? And he was like, yep, yeah, everything, the house is clear, everything's fine. And he ran out the house. Now, as Jack went to follow him, he felt something push him and he fell down the stairs. He hurt himself really, to be fair. And Esther was panicking. She was freaked. She was like, Christ, I've had enough of this. I'm going. I want to leave the house. So they arranged to stay at the sister's house. At Esther's sister's house. And they were gone for a week. Now, they left Mike, Anne and Martha and the baby in the house. Mike and Anne, they were sound. They went to work. But as they were at work one day, Sarah was cranky and she needed to be put down for a nap. And Martha was like, Christ, I'll put her up. So she put her up or whatever, that was fine. She was relaxing, reading a newspaper, whatever she was doing, but all of a sudden the baby started crying again. So she ran upstairs and the door violently shut, slammed in her face. And she was pushing and pushing and she could not for the life of her open that door. So she ran into the neighbours. The neighbours were kind enough to run in and help her try and open this door. Now they were pushing and forcing and everything. But as they were pushing the door, they got it open, but it was wedged with the crib itself. And they're like, why would you, who would have done that? And Sarah, like, not Sarah, but Martha couldn't understand how did the crib get straight to the door, right, wedge the door shut. She couldn't understand it. So herself, she wanted to leave the house. She wanted to go to her parents, well, where her parents were staying. And when Mike and Anne came home from work, she explained to them, look, I want to go stay with Amanda. And they were like, yeah, we're coming with you. So Mike thought he'd ring the parents first. So he tried ringing the house first to say, look, we're on our way. We're coming. We're not staying in this house much longer. As Mike picked up the phone, the phone started getting really, really hot and it melted in his hand and he just threw it on the ground. He's like, what? So anyway, the whole family were gone. They were gone for a week. When they came back, Esther was distraught she was like I've been living in this house for the last 30 years I don't even claim it to be my house anymore I want to move now the housing list back then was quite long well it's big now 
but it was long enough back then. They'd be waiting a good five, six years before they get a house. So they had to deal with it. When they got into the house, the house was ransacked. It was like somebody broke in and just smashed everything in the house. But there was nothing missing. So they thought the best thing they can do is ring the local newspapers and see if they can get this out there so somebody can contact them for help. They didn't know who to contact anymore. Now they knew in the back of their minds they were going to get mocked. There's a lot of people that don't believe in this sort of thing and they knew back in 1996 as well this happened. So there was a lot of sceptical people back then. They weren't as open-minded as they are now. If it was now, everybody would be jumping on to get onto it. But no, back then, not a lot of people were open-minded. So the local newspaper came and it was the news reporter. And she said, can I stay the night at the house to witness this for myself? And they were like, yeah, no bother, stay, it's fine. Now, as the night was going on, she was like, ah, here, what's going on? This ain't real, there's nothing happening here. And she went into the kitchen, she goes, do you mind if I just set up my laptop here and I'll start the story? And Jack was like, you haven't stayed the night, you haven't witnessed anything yet, it's only early yet. And she was like, ah, sure, I'll get it started. And then she was like, Jesus, it's awful cold. Do you have the heating on? And they were like, yeah, we have it on full best, but it, there's a lot of cold spots in this house and we believe that's to do with whatever is going on here. And she was like, yeah, 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 whatever. All of a sudden, though, she hears a massive bang and she runs out to the living room. Everybody does, because that's where the bang came from. And one of their ornaments was on the ground, smashed to pieces. And she was like, there was no one in there. That's a bit weird. So she wrote anyway the news article about it. And she dubbed the house the Galway Haunted. Or the Galway Ghost. It was a mixture of the two. Now a local psychologist, Sandra, she contacted them uh, to come and have a word and talk. Now she... She claimed to be a psychic, actually, as it was, as well as a psychologist. And she felt like, as being a psychologist, she could judge by talking to the this family whether they were making it all up and just doing this for attention seeking. And she believed them. And she asked, can she go up into Sarah Louise's room? So when she went up, she said she could feel this chill and she could feel the eeriness in the air. And she said, do you mind if I just stay in the room by myself? to gather my thoughts and to see what's going on in here. So this is, yeah, no bother. They left her in the room. She sat in the middle of the room and as she closed her eyes and she went deep into thought, she said that she could see this young woman, a, t a teenager even, screaming, howling, crying. What it was, she was in labour and she was giving birth. Now beside her, there was a young man who looked quite upset. An older man, very stern, very angry, a priest and a nun. Now, the nun delivered the baby for her. And as the baby was born, they smothered it in front of her, killed the child and threw it to the side. Now, Sandra, she came back out of it and she came downstairs and she explained to the family what she'd seen. And the first thing she asked was, was there any construction going on around this house? And they were like... Yeah, there was, a few months after Sarah Louise was born. And did it start around then? They were like, yeah. She goes, I believe this ha this land where the houses were built is haunted. And this is what happened in the room. Now, the reason why it's attacking Sarah Louise is because the baby, the spirit baby, is jealous of all the attention and all the love that Martha is given to her child and she wants it for herself. So the only way to clear this, she says, is I could do a clear a clearance in the room, a seance, sorry, in the room. And she can clear all the evil spirits out and let that baby go up to wherever it goes up to, up to heaven, up to the other world. Set it free. So she says one thing, Martha has to stay, but Sarah Louise has to go. Just in case anything happens, but Martha has to stay as she's the mother. So Jack and Esther took the baby into next door and they stayed with the, with the child. They didn't want to be there first. Mike, Anne, Martha and Sandra all went into a circle. 
with a bassinet in the middle, which is to clean where the baby can, can be, can lie down. Now they started praying and she started clear, saying, you know, it's safe for you to go home, it's safe for you to go home. Mike opened his eyes for a brief moment because he could feel pressure even in the room. He could feel something going on. And he said that he witnessed this light just going up to the ceiling and disappearing. That light was the baby and it was set free. Now Sandra said it's done. The baby's gone. You shouldn't have any hassle anymore. Mike was ecstatic. He ran out the house, ran in to the neighbours, says, Dad, Mam, come on, it's safe. As they walked into the room, Jack and Esther and Sarah Louise in the arms, they said that it was like a warmth. The family love and the family warmth was back. That the spirit was gone. They were delighted. There has never been any hassles in the house ever since. Now, that is the story of the Galway Haunting. If you'd like more, don't forget to subscribe to my new channel. And I'll be back next Friday. Bye.